Okay. Oh, I said okay. Sorry about that. We're going to do some fission and fusion example problems. How many neutrons are released in the following fission event? All right, so I have uranium-235. A neutron bumps into it, and it takes it in, and then splits, becomes strontium-88, and xenon, the warrior nuclei-136, plus a bunch of neutrons. Well, first of all, note that if I take the uh, atomic number, the number of protons, 92, and compare that to what we ended up with, we find that they balance each other out. I have as many protons as I started with. need to make sure I have as many neutrons as I started with, right? When I do fission, typically I don't have neutrons turned into protons or protons turned into neutrons or whatnot, so I have to conserve number of protons and number of neutrons. The difference in the number of neutrons, then, is just going to be 235 plus 1 minus 88 minus 136 and that turns out to be 12 leftover neutrons so the number of neutrons that uh, are released then is 12. All right? Fusion. What is X in the following? F sorry, fission. We're doing fission, not fusion. Things are splitting. Um, what is X in the following fission event? Um, okay, so we look at this and we're going to say well, how many protons did I start out with? I started out with 94. 38 of them are accounted for. How many are left? 94 minus 38 is 56. So this must be element number 56. But what's its atomic mass number? I started out with 239 plus 1 nucleons. Accounted for 88 plus 15 of them. So 239 plus 1 minus 88 plus 15, right? So I take all of these, subtract out these, and I'm left with 137, so it must be the, have an atomic mass number of 137. What is element number 56? I go to my table of the elements. Where's 56? There it is, barium, right over here. So it's fifth barium. So X is 56 barium, the A. So it's barium 137. That's what X is, right? Groovy, huh? Okay, so here's the same reaction. Plutonium splits, becomes strontium and barium. How much energy is released when the following fission event occurs? Well, um, I know in my table it's, I've got masses. What, what, okay, the energy released is just delta M times C squared, just like we did on the last assignment. All right, and as with the last assignment, I know when I look at my table, I'm not going to get the masses of the nuclei. I'm going to get the masses of the atoms. So we'll take the mass of a plutonium atom, plutonium-239 atom, minus 94 times the mass of an electron, plus the mass of a neutron, and then we're going to subtract from that. That's our initial mass. Our final mass is the mass of our strontium-88 um, atom, minus 38 electron masses, plus the mass of our barium-137 atom, minus 56 electron masses plus 15 times the mass of a neutron. All right, and we look at this and we say, oh, 38 plus 56, oh, that is 94. And our electrons balance out nicely, so I just have to worry about the masses of the atoms. All right, so let's do this thing. Let's go to Python. And to make life simpler, I'm just going to define variables. So the mass of plutonium mass Pu is going to be uh, 239.0. I move this so I can see. Here we go. It's 239.052163. Mass of strontium 88 is 87.905612. Then the mass of. I don't do that. The mass of barium-137 is going to be 136.905827. The mass of a neutron is 1.2. The number of MeV I get for every uh, atomic mass unit is 
mega electron volts over C squared. All right, so I've got those entered in, and my equation up here is just uh, I'm going to take the mass of plutonium atom plus the mass of a neutron minus the mass of a strontium minus the mass of a barium atom minus 15 times the mass of a neutron. There's how much the atomic mass changes by, but I need to multiply all of that by u in MeV over C squared. And there's the change in mass at MeV over C squared, and multiply by C squared, and there's the energy released at MeV. So 111 MeV. That seems like a lot. Did I do something wrong? All right, check, make sure I did that right, because that seems a little high, but not out of the ballpark. Okay, there we go. Now let's talk about fission. What is X in the following fission event? Fusion, fission. This is a fission. They both start with F. Give me a break. But this... No, this is... Good morning, Alan. Um, we're fusing two things together. This is fusion. This is where my... This is where my typo was. What is X in the following fusion event? All right? Well, I'm putting these two things to get this. All right? So I've got this unknown nucleon or nucleide, all right? Nucleons are things that make up nucleon, nucleides, protons and neutrons, this, uh, anyway. Okay, um, so I start out with three protons, but I'm emitting a positron, right? So I had some positive charge coming out, that means one of my protons turns into a neutron. So the number of protons I end up with is gonna be one plus two minus one, because I converted one to a neutron, so I'm gonna have two protons the number of neutrons. All right, here is one proton and one nucleon, so there's no neutrons here. Here there is one neutron, right? I have two protons, one neutron. So I start with one neutron, but then I convert this to uh, one of my protons to a neutron, so I should have two neutrons when I'm done. So X is going to have two protons and then two neutrons, which means an atomic mass number of four. Element number two, I remember that one, that's helium. So X is helium-4. There you go. Now, how much energy is released in this fusion event? So this is the same one we were looking at before. A hydrogen plus a helium-3 fused to make helium-4 plus a positron and a neutrino. All right, once again, the released energy is the change in mass times C squared. All right, so um, I need the mass. So I take the mass of my helium nucleus, which is the mass of a helium atom, minus one electron, add that to the mass of my helium-3 atom, um, minus, well helium has two electrons, minus two electrons, and I'm going to subtract that from what I'm left with, which is um, the mass of a helium-4 atom, minus, helium has two electrons, so two mass of the electron, plus, I have this extra positron here, right, so that's going to be, have positron has the same mass as an electron. Neutrino has a negligible, ma negligible mass, all right? So here I have, I'm subtracting three here, and here I've got minus two plus one, so I'm only subtracting one. So this is gonna be mass of hydrogen atom plus mass of helium three minus the mass of helium four. And then when I do all the electrons, I'm left with uh, subtracting out two electron masses, all right? Okay, so Hydrogen minus helium, hydrogen plus helium three minus helium four minus two electron masses. All right, and here from our table are the masses of our various things. So the mass of hydrogen is 1.007825 atomic mass units. The mass of helium three is 3.016. 029 atomic mass units. The mass of helium 4 is going to be 4. Point, hmm, mass of type line 4.002603. All right, did I do that right? 4.02603. Is that what it was? Yes. Then the mass of an electron. The mass of an electron is 0.000. .000 5486 atomic mass units. 
And so our change in mass was the mass of a hydrogen plus the mass of a helium-3. Um, these two hit together. And then we had to subtract off the mass of a helium-4 minus 2 times the mass of an electron. So there is our change in mass. If I multiply that by my how many um, mega electron volts you get from one atomic mass unit, this comes out to be 18.8 .8 mega electron volts. All right, incidentally, that's the end of our problems. Um, but I just wanted to point out, we got a much higher energy for the fission than we did for fusion. However, the things we started with when we did fusion were much lighter. And it turns out, typically, with fusion, you get more energy out per kilogram of fuel than you do with fission, even though you get out typically more energy per event with fission. So there you have it. Good luck with the homework.